as software engineers, there are some things that are instinctive to us. How many times have you sat down to debug something really quick only to find yourself deep into the code six hours later? Or how many times have you gotten out of bed in the middle of the night because you remember that you could rewrite that one module slightly better? These are mostly harmless instincts, but there are some instincts that we all have as software engineers that can actually do harm and severely impact our growth or even destroy our career. And in this video, I will talk about three such instincts that could be holding you back as a software engineer and how you can recognize and control them before they do any harm. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. I have over 20 years of experience in the industry and I'm currently a senior software engineer at Microsoft. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars of career development. Technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, consider subscribing and follow me at Utsav Eyes for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. This first instinct is rampant in software engineering students and is often the most dangerous one out of the three because it stunts your progress right at the very beginning of your software engineering journey. The instinct I'm talking about here is the desire to learn too many things at once. To be honest, I understand and sympathize with this. I was in the exact same boat. If you're going to school for software engineering and learning things like C++ or Java, but when you see everywhere else, everyone else is talking about much cooler things, it is understandable that you have a fear of missing out on jumping on the latest and greatest technology stack. But trust me, this instinct will eventually end up hurting you on the long run. I always say quality is better than quantity, but in this case, it's especially true. The exact stack you pick up initially does not really matter. What matters is that you learn the fundamentals and the core constructs of programming itself. By focusing your efforts and diving deep into a specific thing, you can get a deeper understanding of its intricacies and nuances. This depth of knowledge will enable you to tackle complex problems more effectively and make significant contributions to whichever project or product you eventually work on. Not to mention having in-depth knowledge of one stack actually makes it easier to pick up new ones because you have a good handle on the basics and really different stacks are not that different. There's also this belief that resumes don't get selected if you don't have experience in multiple programming stacks. This is not entirely true. I will agree that the more experience you have in one or more stacks, the better it is. However, the quality of experience matters. For example, if you have listed Express in your resume, I would at least expect you to know a thing or two about writing proper web APIs in the context of a real world application. Simply having watched a few YouTube tutorials or built a simple to-do app isn't real experience. I would rather hire someone who is very proficient in Python and Django to build a web application using Node and Express than someone who has very surface level understanding of Node and Express and including everything else they've listed on the resume. And look, if you're fresh out of college, no one expects you to know more than one language. In fact, if you have listed five or more, I will consider it a red flag. If you're hell bent on adding stuff to your resume, then use this simple formula. Add one programming language or framework for every two to three years of experience you have. So if you have 10 years of experience, expect to have three to five in there. And if you're fresh out of college, one is good enough. The fundamentals of writing efficient code, debugging complex issues, or optimizing for performance isn't language or framework specific. Pick one stack and focus on becoming very good at it before moving on to something else. So instead of becoming the jack of all trades and master of none, your goal should actually be to become the jack of a bunch of trades, but master of a few. Okay, this one is super common in new hires and new software engineers in general. The instinct to get it done all by themselves. They don't ask for help or raise concern. They sit there in their own little bubble, most likely very stressed out and overworked just so they can get the work done by themselves. Now, this could be a new software engineer pride of wanting to prove a point or maybe imposter syndrome where you think that admitting you don't know something will reveal your weaknesses or maybe a mix of both, but that's pretty common. 
We often have a sense of pride in our abilities and prefer to solve problems independently. And at the same time, we are also reluctant to admit our vulnerabilities. While self-reliance is admirable and self-preservation is natural, it's also important to recognize the value of collaboration and asking for help. Regardless of what it is, software engineering is like a team sport and you are a collaborator in that team. And your team is there to help you succeed. Seeking assistance from colleagues or the broader community can lead to faster problem solving and more innovative solutions. By sharing your challenges and engaging in discussions, you open yourself up to fresh perspectives, diverse ideas, and ultimately greater growth. By not doing so, you're not only severely limiting your own growth, but also potentially jeopardizing your entire project. I remember during one of my first internships, my manager asked me to create a new report for an upcoming board meeting. I was there to write some features in Java, but writing SQL wasn't out of scope. I'd written some SQL in some of my projects before, and I had listed that on my resume. So my manager probably assumed I was comfortable writing SQL. Well, for this report, the query was more challenging than anything I'd written before, but I was so embarrassed to admit it that I spent a very long few days trying to figure it out. Eventually, I got the results I wanted, but the report took about eight minutes to run. When I eventually handed it over to my manager, he came over to my desk and helped me understand. He also explained the concepts that I wasn't aware of and even taught me some cool techniques that could help me get the results much faster. It was the opposite of embarrassing. If I had asked some of the same questions early on and explained that I didn't have much experience in SQL, we could have had that session days earlier. Not only that, but I would also have wasted less time and would have actually used that information to write much more efficient query feeling a greater sense of accomplishment. So embrace collaboration and understand that asking for help is a sign of strength rather than weakness, which can help you tap into a wealth of collective knowledge, accelerate your problem solving and foster innovation. So the next time you find yourself stuck or facing a complex issue, don't hesitate to ask for help. Remember that collaboration is the key to overcoming obstacles and pushing the boundaries of what you can achieve. Okay, so the final growth hindering instinct mostly affects experienced software engineer, and that instinct is getting too attached to a particular project. The more experienced you are, the more invested you are on all areas of a project from requirements to architecture to implementation. So it's very natural to get passionate about it. However, an important characteristic of an agile team or company is to be able to pivot. Projects can get canceled, teams can get restructured, and software engineers can get moved to different areas. Clinging on to a project can limit your ability to adapt in such situations, hindering your potential to take advantage of better opportunities. The software engineering landscape, as you all know, evolves pretty rapidly. New frameworks, tools, and approaches emerge, presenting fresh possibilities. By staying open to change and being willing to let go of a project when the time is right, you create space for new ideas and experiences. Not only that, being too attached to a project to a point where you're protective of it gives rise to defensive behaviors, which can be very toxic in a team environment. One good exercise to prevent yourself from getting to that point is to think of the bus factor from early in the project. The bus factor is basically a measurement of risk resulting from information and capabilities not being shared among team members, uh, basically derived from the phrase, in case they got hit by a bus. So even if you're leading the project and are a critical part of every aspect of it, think of what happens if you were to be hit by a bus. How would the project continue? And if you're so passionate about the project, would you be happy if it just died because no one other than you knew what was going on? Well, this encourages knowledge sharing, which in turn encourages a flat structure of collaboration instead of a hierarchical leader follower structure. And as a result, even though you lead the project and are passionate about it, you feel a joint sense of ownership. So when it is time to move on, if it's just you who's moving on, you feel confident that the project is in good hands. Or if the entire project gets scrapped, your disappointment is shared and you collectively move forward. While these three instincts usually affect software engineers at different stages, they kind of go hand in hand. When you invest too much of your time gathering surface level knowledge for the vanity of it, you will eventually struggle to do the work that you're expected to because you lack 
in-depth expertise. When that happens because of a mix of pride and vulnerability, you decide to try to do it alone without seeking help. You may get through it that way and eventually learn your ropes the hard and long way, but you will end up becoming the lone wolf software engineer who likes working by themselves, is protective and defensive of their projects and resistant to changes. And trust me, no one wants to work with that software engineer. If you want more information on how you can grow in your career as a software engineer, check out this more detailed video that I made about the topic. Or if you want more details on why hopping around multiple programming stacks could keep you stuck in an endless loop of analysis paralysis and tutorial hell, check out this other video that a lot of people liked as well. Please like this video if you found it useful and consider subscribing to the channel for more. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.